Good morning, everyone. Happy Epiphany. Welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's Anglican Church for Sunday, January the 8th. The grace of our Lord, oh, nope, sorry, I forgot. As we begin our service of worship, we acknowledge the land in which we gather on is the traditional territory, first to the neutral people, then the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe people, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is within the land protected by the protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. Let us continue to work towards reconciliation with our siblings, and always remember that our great standard of living is directly related to the Indigenous people's resources and their care for this land. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord God, the Lord is, the Lord our God is one Lord. I'm tongue-tied this morning, I'm sorry. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly guiding, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son of Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that take us away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that take us away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. For thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, who by a star led wise men to the worship of your Son, guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may know your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you, your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Epha, all those of Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Yeah. 
We will say Psalm 72 responsively by the full verse. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. O God, bring our nation and all nations a sense of justice and equity, so that poverty, oppression, violence may vanish, and all may know peace and plenty. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given me to me to bring the Gentiles the news of boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through him, through faith in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who, been, who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. He told them, in Bethlehem of Judea, for 
for so it has been written by the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means less among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them, when the star that had been seen as it's rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. You can chuckle. Go ahead. I speak to you in the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. When I was looking at the pictures for at the beginning, I, you know, I kept coming across all sorts of little cute ones, so I figured I'd put those ones up for the sermon. The story of the Magi, the, the celebration of Epiphany, it's interesting because there's so much of what we do is kind of incorrect. <laughs> and what we know, I'm not sure how we know it or why we know it. Um, let me explain. The one thing that we do know to be true in regards to the epiphany is that Matthew is the only gospel who writes about it. Matthew is the only person who puts the story of the epiphany in the gospel. And scholars believe that Matthew did that because of whose Matthew's audience was. Matthew was writing to Jewish people. So Matthew wanted to emphasize for the Jewish people Jesus' kingship. He wanted the Jewish people to realize how important Jesus was that these visitors brought gifts that were meant for a king, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The things that's in question that you have to wonder why we celebrate what we celebrate. Nowhere in the Bible does it actually say there was three. <laughs> nowhere in the story does it say there was three. And I, nowhere in the Bible does it say their names. You do know we supposedly know their names, right? Do you know what their names are? In the Western church, we know them as Malachi, Balthazar, and Gaspar. In the Eastern tradition, they know them as Laverdan, Gashnafa, and Hormista. I know, they're big names. But where did we get these names? Where did the Eastern church and Western church get these names? I have no idea. I looked, believe me but yet we have these names. We assume there is three, plain and simply, because there is three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But that's kind of a ridiculous assumption, and here's the reason why. Actually, I wanna go back. The other thing that we do that is incorrect is that we have them in the manger. We have them arriving when Jesus was an infant. But in today's gospel reading, it said they're looking for the child. They're looking for the child. And it says they arrived at the house. And the next story in Matthew, I don't know if we hear it next week or not, I haven't looked that far in advance, is that Herod actually massacres all the male children under the age of two. So Jesus was not a baby. <laughs> he was not at the manger. He was at his home with Mary and Joseph. So how did this happen? And I'm doing that because of the manger back there. 
Something else we need to think about and consider are these men that came to visit. I think it's a safe assumption that these are well-educated men and men of means because of the gifts that they bring. Some scholars believe that they were priests that's, and they were astrologers and ast uh, um, ast uh, astronomers, that they studied scripture, they studied the stars. Maybe they knew the line in Numbers that says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. Why did these wise men come? These are well-educated men. And to think that there was only three of them, honest to goodness, there is no way. They wouldn't have traveled by themselves. They would have had a full entourage because they would have needed people to help them with their tents, to help them with food, and they would have had to have security for the gifts. There would have been a full entourage showing up at that house that day, more than three. What's really important about the story of the Magi is this. The story of the Magi is about three real men, but it's also a symbolic story as well. We have three real, we have, sorry, we have real men. I'm not gonna use the word three. We have real men who journeyed to find a stranger, to confirm an ancient prophecy that they had heard about a star that was going to rise in the sky and lead them to the Messiah, lead them to a heavenly king, not an earthly king, a heavenly king, somebody who is going to make a difference in the world. And they did that. And they weren't surprised in any way, shape, or form when they came across Jesus. As symbols for us, they are a demonstration that this small child came to save everybody, rich or poor, educated or uneducated. This small child was coming not to save just one particular group. This child was coming to save everybody. Because if you think about it, here are these wealthy, wealthy travelers, obviously, again, educated, for them, if you figure, because there was a lot of planning to follow that star. They are on the complete opposite end, social and economical end, of not only Mary and Joseph, but the shepherds. Yet, when they arrived in that house, they were overwhelmed with joy. They fell to their knees. They paid homage to a small child. The Messiah was here to take care of everyone. I was thinking while reading this gospel and when I was doing all my research, if this star was so bright and so big, how is it the Herod's men didn't see it or Herod didn't see it? Why is there actual no documentation on it? There is none. There is no historian who wrote about this star. Absolutely none. I have a Jewish friend who actually said that they write everything, and they have no record of it. To me, that's a little disconcerting, because you would think that the birth of the Messiah would be some grand extravaganza event something that God would want everybody, everybody to know about. But yet only a small select few seem to know that it happened. So knowing that the Messiah really, uh, that the Magi didn't really arrive when Jesus was a baby, knowing that there could have been more than just three, knowing that really we have no idea how we know their names, and that there's no recorded evidence of the star. What do you think of the story? 
Does it change in your mind? Does it seem less important? Have I ruined it for you? Let's look at the definition of epiphany for a second. Epiphany is the appearance or manifestation of a divine being or a sudden manifestation or perception of the meaning of something, a relevant moment. If we look at the textbook definition of epiphany, and we look at this experience, I think we can continue to find a deep connection between us and God and the Magi. If think about it for a sec, how many of you have had epiphanies in your lifetime? Yeah, we all have epiphanies. Now, I'm not talking about the epiphanies, the aha moments. Those are important, but I'm talking big epiphanies that connect us to Christ, connect us to God's blessing and grace, and we look at it and go, oh, there you are. There you are. I hope when you read the gospel or when you read the, or you listen to the gospels and you hear, especially as stories like today, that they want to send you on a journey. They want you to, that you get excited, that you want to explore new life again. You want to open up your treasure chest, <laughs> as it were, and find the things that you are searching for, the things that God is putting in your sight that you might be missing. But now, this new year, 2023, you're like, no, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with my eyes wide open. Because the thing with the epiphany for the visitors that day, the epiphany wasn't just them walking into the house and seeing Jesus on Mary's lap. The epiphany was the whole journey. From the moment that star rose in the sky to their journey across the desert, to their time in Bethlehem, their time with Herod, their time with Jesus. And I guarantee you a multitude of times afterwards that we just don't even know about. The epiphany is ongoing. The epiphany is ongoing. I want you to think two sides of the spectrum. Think of a day, it wasn't that special of a day. But nothing was missing. Everything went as planned. It, and it was a great day. He was like, hmm, I was expecting something. But it just worked out the way it was supposed to. Or the opposite, where you have a plan and absolutely nothing goes right. You forget everything. Things aren't working. Things are broken. Things are missing. But it still turns out to be a great day. And at the end of both of those days, you just go, God, wow, thanks. Because you were able to see God in that day, whether it was an uninteresting day or a very complex day. The fact that you can see God in that day is an epiphanal day. It's a day where you are filled with the Lord. That is an example of God's rising star. When you can see God in your day, that's an example of God's rising star within you. Another example of God's rising star, this one's a little bit more, uh, I want to say, dramatic maybe. Think of a time when you were telling somebody a secret. And it's a secret that, you know, that you just have wrapped yourself up in shame and guilt and anger. And you've never told this to anybody before, but for whatever reason this day, you decide you're going to share it with somebody. And you're talking to this person like you've never spoken to anybody before in your life. And that person sits there and just listens. 
They just listen. There's no judgment. There's no question. There's no, they're not condemning you. They're not ridiculing you. They're not laughing at you. They're just honoring you. They're just honoring you and respecting you. And you can feel a shift within you. Like a, there's a sense of healing. That's God. That is God's rising star within you. That is an epiphanal moment. Epiphanies happen all the time, big or small. They are moments that change us in ways that we never expected, maybe never even wanted. There are moments when we realize that we are truly and honestly stepping into a fullness of life, a new life. We're becoming more real. Or what's the new catchphrase? We're becoming more authentic. There you're developing a patience and understanding, a longing that you've never had before. You don't feel like you have to hide. You're proud of who you are. These are epiphanal moments. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and, with, and throughout him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. Jesus is the light and the life of this world. The epiphany of Christ was not just meant for the visitors that day. The rising star, real or not, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the light they saw was really the light of Christ. And it was so strong at that time, they were able to see it from afar. Maybe that's why nobody else saw it, but they did. The rising star is in each and every one of us. God pulling us to him. The epiphany is not just one experience. It is a life journey. It is a multitude of moments. God's rising star is in each and every one of us. We just need to open up our hearts and our minds and see it. We need to allow that the epiphanies that God has placed before us to happen. We need to allow ourselves to experience them. And we need to be able to say thank you, God, for allowing us to be a part of your life and for you being a part of ours. Amen. Let us stand together and confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayers of the people. The Magi came from the East to worship your son. Father, grant to the Christians everywhere the spirit of adoration and that through their worship they may reflect the glorious light of Christ. Heavenly Father, you sent your son to guide your people 
just as you sent a star to guide the wise men to worship him. We pray that you will always be present to guide our church as we begin this new year and as we take our steps along our journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, as we face the year ahead, we pray for your world. Let the star of your justice always shine in the hearts of those who are in authority. Enable all nations to recognize the sanctity of each and every human life in their care so that all may experience an abundance of peace and security. We bring before you all areas of the world currently at war and in crisis and ask that leaders of those nations will be able to find solutions. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the leaders of your church. We ask for your blessing on Primate Linda, Metropolitan Anne, Bishop Susan, our Rector Jody, and all clergy throughout the world, that they continue to bring the truth of the gospel to your people. We pray for all the people in our parish, remembering especially George Duma, Charlotte Dusso, Matt and Karen Eberly, Bob and Nicole Ebert, Elizabeth Ebert, Stuart Edwards, Shirley Farragali, Jean and Ruth Ferris, their families and loved ones as they live their faith. For the corporation, our parish council, and all the volunteer groups who perform a multitude of responsibilities, we ask for your continued guidance and support as they work for the betterment of the parish. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, your son shared the life of his home and family at Nazareth. We give thanks for his presence with us in our homes and in our lives. Guide us in our relationships with family and neighbors, especially those in trouble or need, and bless those who are guided and enriched, have enriched our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we pray for all those who have lost their way. We raise before you all those whose lives are unfulfilled. We pray for those whose lives are affected by illness. We remember the chronically ill, those in constant pain, the dis depressed, the despairing, and those with all other adversities. We ask that you hold in your comforting arms Mary Cullen, Elizabeth Ebert, Eleanor Kendall, Robert Krasick, Judy Rigsby, Pam Simons, Doug Stewart, Rebecca and Dave Marchand, Pam, Donna Kalelioff, Stephen, Dave King, Austin, Angela, and Jackie Roy. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who are coming to the end of their journey here on earth and those who have died, remembering this week Bob Pressey and Donald Porter, who passed away. We are thankful that they will be received into your loving presence and kingdom. We remember, too, Don and Ella Taylor and Betty Kalelioff, in whose memory the flowers are given today. We pray, too, that you will enfold in your loving arms and provide comfort to all those who mourn and give them peace. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, as we go out into this new year, we ask for the loving presence of your Holy Spirit to be with us, to share in its joys, and to strengthen us in its sorrows. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. 
If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. I share each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you at home. Let us pray. Gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people, joined in praise and thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet and right in our bound and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in substance of our mortal flesh manifests forth his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. 
Therefore, with the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, O Zion in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty Father, our he Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a perfect, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Christ, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, and by, may be by takers of his most blessed, blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant that is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of holy bread of eternal life in the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he has commanded. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness to mercifully, to, fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, the, and through faith of his blood, that we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all thy benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifolds and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, 
and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. For my dear friends who could not be here with us today, I invite you wherever you may be to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, though many, and make us one in you. Amen. Please join us at the Lord's table.
Let us pray. God of all the nations of the earth, guide us with your light. Help us to recognize Christ as he comes to us in the Eucharist and in our neighbors. May we welcome him with love, for he is the Lord, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Glory to God, whose power and working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten all our hearts with holiness. And may the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always, this day and forever. Amen. Please be seated for just a couple of announcements. So I'm going to admit something, and yes, it's going to be on camera. I need to listen to my husband every now and again. <laughs> Yesterday, I was like, I'm going to, I need to announce this, I need to announce this. And he's like, write them down. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll write them down when I get to work tomorrow. Yeah, I forget half of them. I should have wrote them down last night. Um, just a couple things. Um, it's not 100% yet. We're about 96% this is true. Um, but for the first time in a very long time, we're ending the year in the black, on the positive. If we are, if we are in the hole, it's very little. It's not, it's not the, the massive deficit that we, had pre we thought it was going to be. So I just wanted to share that because I was very excited about it. Um, the other thing I wanted to share, because I thought this was really good, I just realized. Um, so overall, between the money that we raised for Ukraine and for those of you who use the PWRDF envelopes, this year we gave to PWRDF $2,140, which I think is fantastic. Like, it's just, that is so great how we are supporting the, the Primates uh, World Development Fund. I just want, again, wanted to share that with you. Um, mark Sunday, February the 26th on your calendar. That is Vestry. I would love to see everybody's face there. Um, and last but not least, I didn't mention it last week, envelopes, they're in the back. Um, grab yours. If there's anybody, if you look at them and you know somebody, um, and you know they're not necessarily coming on a regular basis, but you are friends with them, take theirs, deliver them, because whatever's not taken this week, I am, we are going to have to mail out. So um, I'd rather not have to mail too many, please, and thank you. So if you could take them, that would be great. Our service is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.